Well, let's talk now about the circulation of the atmosphere, the global atmospheric circulation. And we're going to look at the global atmospheric circulation more with an eye towards how it affects ocean circulation than getting into a very detailed and complex uh, look at all the aspects of the global atmospheric circulation. But again, when we look at models of the circulation of the atmosphere, um, there are a couple ones that are now um, taught and a couple sort of common models, one that's been taught for many, many years, decades, in fact, of the circulation in the atmosphere that's probably more idealized than actual, and a new model of the atmosphere that tries to take some of the new complexities that have been discovered in recent decades into account. We'll take a short look at both of those, but again, the details aren't so important. Um, what is important, you remember some of the aspects of the patterns of wind uh, and patterns of circulation of the, over the ocean so that we can better understand things like surface circulation in our next chapter and even waves as we move on to that topic. Okay, it really is uneven heating of Earth's surface that creates the winds and creates the differences in pressure in both the atmosphere and the ocean. And as I talked about earlier, wind or air or water even, fluids move from regions of high pressure to regions of low pressure. And really, the movements that we see in the atmosphere are by and large mostly due to those pressure differences that we find across the surface of the Earth. Really, actually, anywhere in the atmosphere, not just the surface, of course, but anywhere in the atmosphere, any pressure differences are going to cause motions of winds. The large-scale motions um, are what we call the global atmospheric circulation. And when we get to talking about motions of seawater, we'll be talking about the world ocean circulation. For the most part, in dealing with circulation in the atmosphere, we talk about um, high pressure and low pressure. So air masses with high pressure relative to the air that surrounds them are called high pressure centers or highs, and air masses with low pressure again, relative to the surrounding air. So if the air somewhere is lower than the air that surrounds it, we call those low pressure centers or lows. And if you just take a look at an evening weather broadcast or go on to the National Weather Service site and look at um, surface maps of, um, of weather, weather surface maps, they'll always indicate highs and lows because looking at highs and lows and understanding a little bit about meteorology can help tell you something about what the weather is going to be like, where the winds are going to come from, how strong the winds are going to be, and all those useful kinds of things um, that may affect your day. Okay, this is just an illustration of what I just talked about in terms of motions of fluids. With greater pressure, the motion is going to go in this direction towards the lower pressure. And we can symbolize this with just, in the case of water, this could be air as well. So where we have higher pressure, the, mo the motion of the fluid is going to be away from the higher pressure and towards the lower pressure. We see the same thing with atmosphere, which of course, of course the ocean is three-dimensional as well. But if we have higher pressure, that air may sink and go towards regions of lower pressure and this is a kind of phenomenon that we generally see in the global atmospheric circulation okay so just keeping in mind high to low all right just before we get too far with this i want to familiarize you with what i find to be a confusing convention but it's the way it is and we have to live with it i'm just the messenger winds are named according to the direction they come from, just like Wicked Witches. So where was the Wicked Witch of the West from? She was from the West. A north wind then is a wind from the north, as an east wind is from the east, south wind from the south, and so on. That's not too difficult, right? Currents, on the other hand, are named according to the direction they go to. So a southerly current or a south current is moving towards the south. That means that it's coming from the north, okay? Now, that can get confusing to some people. So, just keep that in mind. Winds are like wicked witches. They're named according to the direction they come from. Currents 
are named according to the direction they go to. Just a convention to be familiar with, confusing nonetheless. Now let's talk about what happens as air or water moves from a region of high pressure towards a region of low pressure. Of course, when we have an object moving across the surface of the Earth, the Coriolis effect comes into play. All right, we have to take into account the Coriolis effect. Because, again, objects that are moving across the surface of the ocean tend to move towards the right in the, southern hem in the northern hemisphere and tend to move towards the left in the southern hemisphere. The Coriolis effect is actually going to cause rotation or circular motions in either direction as a result of motions of being affected by the Coriolis effect. So let's look at an example. In the northern hemisphere, as air is moving towards a low pressure, that air is going to tend off towards the right. As it deflects to the right, it's going to result in a kind of counterclockwise flow that we call a cyclonic flow. If again, you think about Dorothy and cyclones, they are generally stormy systems and they rotate in the northern hemisphere in a cyclonic direction. That's why they're called cyclones. So counterclockwise is cyclonic in the northern hemisphere. Of course, a cyclone in the southern hemisphere is going to rotate in what direction? Yes, that's right, the opposite direction. So you're going to have a clockwise rotation of a cyclone in the southern hemisphere. That's why scientists call them cyclones because they don't want to keep track of counterclockwise and clockwise because they're the same phenomenon, a hurricane or a tornado. They're rotating in a counterclockwise direction or cyclonic direction, counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere, clockwise in the southern hemisphere. If they move in the opposite direction, so if we have something as a high pressure system, the flow of air around a high pressure system in the northern hemisphere is going to be clockwise. We call that anti-cyclonic. So these terms cyclonic and anti-cyclonic are applied to low and high pressure systems. We also apply them to rotations of the ocean and really it's not so important um, in, in that you are completely familiar with those two terms. I think you can recognize, um, for, at least for the northern hemisphere, the motion. So if you get that down, I'll be happy with that. And if you understand that the motions are in the opposite direction in the southern hemisphere, that's fine as well. But if you want to be most technically correct, you will use the term cyclonic and anti-cyclonic. Okay, here's what it looks like. This is figure 816 in the text. So as air moves towards a low pressure, you can see that it begins to deflect towards the right. And ultimately, that motion then is going to be in a counterclockwise direction or a cyclonic direction in the northern hemisphere. On the other hand, a high pressure system as air is moving away from the high pressure center, here you can see it deflects towards the right, deflects towards the right, begins to move towards the right. So this is a clockwise or anti-cyclonic direction. It also, importantly, low pressure systems tend to draw air upwards as a result if we look at them from the side. So low pressure systems tend to be associated with rising air whereas high pressure systems are tend to be associated with sinking air. And if you're a southern hemisphere viewer we have exactly the opposite kind of thing in the southern hemisphere because the Coriolis effect is to the left. So here we have high air, air moving away from a high, moving towards the left, and we have actually counterclockwise, but we still call it anticyclonic because it is anticyclonic. It's just a different atmosphere, okay? This is still a cyclone, it's still a low pressure center, but in the southern hemisphere, the flow is clockwise instead of counterclockwise like it is in the northern hemisphere. All of this is due to the Coriolis effect, and about now you should be repeating the mantra, northern hemisphere right, southern hemisphere left. Got that?